Hello everyone, welcome back to Code Studio. And in this video, we would be discussing on a new question named Maximum GCD. This question appeared in Code Forces round 651, Div 2. The question is in front of you, or you can head over to the link given in the description. I have left the link to the question in the description below so that you can have a glance over the question and try for the first time before moving any further with this video. Okay, so we were given a number n that actually tells us to include all the numbers from 1 to n, both inclusive, right? If we were given a number 5, that actually means we have to include 1, 2, 4 and 5. And if we were given a number 10, then we have to include we were asked to find a pair of numbers a and b that actually are inclusive of the numbers a and n and the hcf of the pairs a and b is as maximum as possible. We have to find such a pair a and b whose hcf is as maximum as possible. Fine. So before we actually materialize our solution, Let's actually know what's a GCD or HCF means. From the name HCF, it means highest common factor. So if there are two numbers, A and B in this case, we have to jot down all the factors of A and B and then find the common factors of A and B, pull them up and then we have to find the highest or the largest number of all those common factors. That largest number correspond to the greatest common divisor or highest common factor of those two numbers a and b. In this case, let's just take the numbers 3 and 6 for an example. The factors of 3 are 1 and 3. The factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3 and 6. The common factors of 3 and 6 include 1 and 3. Then the highest common factor among 1 and 3 would obviously be 3. Therefore, HCF of 3 comma 6 would be 3. If we were given some number like 1 and 100, the factors of 1 is 1 and the factors of 100 go on very large, then the common factor is only 1 and obviously the HCF would be 1. Therefore, the HCF of any number with 1 would obviously be 1. In this way, you find the HCF or GCD. In our point of discussion, let's take an example of 5 in this case. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are many possible pairs, but we have to find the pair which has the highest common factor. Actually, highest, highest common factor. Any pair that includes 1 has an HCF of 1. So, don't include 1 in our pairs. So, 5 pairs are reduced and then now let's do some trial and error. HCF of 2 and 3 is 1, 2 and 4 is 2, 2 and 5 is uh, 1. So, a maximum up till now is 2, uh, 3 and 4 is 1, 3 and 5 is 1. So, let's just store our HCF that's 2. And if there is uh, 10 here, 1, 2, 3. After some trial and error, we find that the HCF of these is 5 which comes from the pair of numbers 10 and 5 right if the value of n is 7 then the hcf here in this case would be 3 which would come from the following pairs 3 and 6 so the numbers include either the last number or the last but one number right so the pair includes the last or last but one number and the hcf is obviously 4 by 2 10 by 2 and 6 by 2 Let's just say this value, the last but one or the last, let's assume it is k, then the value of HCF in this case would be k by 2. How can we get the value of last or last but one number? It is nothing but the value of step of n by 2. So what does step of n by 2 means? If n by 2 is an integer, then we directly take the integer. If it's a decimal part, we take only the integer part of the decimal part. If it's 4, we directly take 4. If it's 4.5, we only take the value of 4. Got it? So, how do you implement step of n by 2? It's pretty simple. You don't need to do anything. 
let's declare an integer a which is equal to n by 2 if n by 2 returns an integer value here a only inputs integer values fine a only inputs integer values if n by 2 is an integer a obviously take an integer and if n by 2 is a fractional part same as the case like 4.5 then a being an integer only takes the integer part of the decimal number hence solving our issue of implementing step of n by 2 so you get the thing right the hcf or the highest highest common factor is a in this case which is nothing but step of n by 2 or simply n by 2 the question was pretty simple and pretty easy to solve we have to just do some trial and error to figure out what is the answer generally the a questions do not require the implementation of heavy data structures and algorithms to solve the problems they are mere implementation and math related problems so you must think in a math point of view or implementation point of view where you just have to tweak some math formulas like this thing step of n by 2 or finding the last one by 2 or such things or finding the remainder and then using the remainder to tweaks the answer in that way right so generally 60 to 70 percent of the cases a questions do not require at least a single data structure the question completed the question completes in o of 1 or o of n at max when you aren't unable to do with the basic implementation then you have to think of implementing basic sorting techniques and implementing the basic uh, array or vector or set in this case even if you aren't able to do this which is pretty strange happens 1% or 2% of the chances then you have to think of implementing a higher level data structures or some tricky algorithms that do not require data structures but require an algorithmic point of view to think this isn't very hard to code right just printing n by 2 okay let's do it at lightning speed okay before moving any further let's just verify our input and output methods I know this is weird because the question was pretty simple but we have to see the input and output just in case. So the first line contains a single integer t, the number of test cases, that's fine I have to account for t number of test cases, I'll run a while loop on it, okay. Then the only line of each test case contains a single integer n which is like 1 to n the numbers we take, okay that's also fine. Output. For each test case, output the maximum value of GCD. That's the A value. Or, no, A is taken by something else. Oh, uh, okay. So, A is nothing but N by 2, right? And, obviously, we have to print each test case answer in a new line. Cool. Let's get going. Okay. So, let me fill out the boilerplate. So, I have to account for T number of test cases. Hence, I'll in t and input t and for each test case I have to input an integer n and then for each test case I have to print out the value of n by 2 and with an n line character of course. Uh, am I done with this? Um, yes, good to go. So now let's open our code forces judge and then submit our code. Yes, a code got accepted. So fine. So this is how you code for the question that we have discussed just now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like below and subscribe to my channel. Until then, thank you. Signing off, signing it, Code Studio.